Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Song and a Chat with your host, Pete Pascoe. That would be me. Okay, how you doing? I'll tell you, whoop, left to the real piano player. Uh, we're a bit different tonight. Um, if it sounds a bit different, that's because I'm videoing it. All right, just a bit of a snippet. We'll see how long we go, just to give it a go. I thought we might sort of put some directly onto YouTube for just a change. So welcome everybody to my studio. Here we go. Um, this is where it all happens. Every week I love to sit down and sort of just have a bit of a bit of a chat about what's going on. Um, how you doing? Yeah, what's what's happening? Where you are? Uh, I'm beaming out of here or whatever it is I do from Melbourne and Australia. And uh, yeah, a bit chilly. Not too bad actually. Like my shirt. Thanks, Digger. <laughs> All right. Uh, if this is your first visit here, what am I doing? Hey, thank you so much for dropping by. Um, what is it that you're likely to expect? Well, pretty much as we're going here, we run without a script. That's what I like to do. It sort of keeps things in the flow, keeps it really sort of real. And I like to have a bit of fun along the way. Uh, you can have some piano. Yep, not bagpipes. Yeah, each to their own. Bagpipes are very cool. On the other side of the world. Oh, harsh. <laughs> and um, you're going to get some music here. And uh, I'm going to feature a song you'll have seen on the show notes. Um, this song is called Molly Brown. Or that's the subject of the song. I haven't quite decided on the title of the song because I just wrote it uh, two nights ago. Well, look, I'll tell you what. Um... I'll give it a little snippet here. The, the melody has been with me for a while, and the chords. Uh, the notes you hear, I wish they were right now. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so there's something there. When, when I had that, I thought, wow, that's cool. And this, it goes on from there, and there's... There's some parts that I really, really like. I thought, well, I really, really like, sorry. This would really work, I think, as a solo piano piece, but straight away when I did it on that last part, uh, that. Mm -hmm -hmm, something brown. It was always something brown. With, it was definitely a woman. I thought Lucy Brown, like like Charlie Brown. I don't know, it's Lucy, I, think, I don't even know. Is that a sister? I can't remember. Brilliant, brilliant, Charles. Schultz, isn't it? Wow, wow, great cartoonists. Must have a look at some more uh, Snoopy and Charlie Brown. Brilliant. And, and actually, I love how the I love how the parents in when when they did it when they animated Charlie Brown. Here's the thing. I think they did a really really great job because Charlie Brown is all about the kids' world. It's all the way all from the children's angle, yeah. And whenever the parents came along, whoa, the light goes on. That's <laughs> all tap. Pick that up on the side of the road. Cool, eh? Brighter. Ooh. <laughs> You're right at home, huh? Ooh, right, 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 bigger, less, less, more, got it. Uh, the light, you won't have got that on the, oh, God, that was for the video people. i got to concentrate on the audio because you people are focusing in here going, what if, where, what's happened to Pasco this week? Where's he gone? Uh, he's gone to Charlie Brownland because yeah, when the parents came along, they never gave them voices and talking. They just went, when they had something to say, it was always, mm-hmm, <laughs> <laughs> and as a parent, I know exactly what that means now. It's like, uh -huh, would you go and clean your... Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, right. Got it? All right. So how the heck did we get to Charlie Brown? Um, Molly Brown. Yeah, Molly Brown. Okay. So what happened next was it just sort of floated around. And then straight away, too, I knew this would be like a historical kind of a song. It came to me. It's like these are what... It was like the, the voice said, these are what this song is for. Wait and the words will come. <laughs> it felt like that. And then one night, just the other night, it's it, Titanic. I went, really? But it, it's kind of been done, you know? Yeah, and uh, I didn't know. I thought, yeah, maybe. Well, the next morning, you know what? I flicked on the computer and there was an article came up about Molly Brown from the Titanic. How about that? That, that kind of really... Or it's, whoa, okay, that is kind of wild. Sure, okay, yes, Siri might have been in on the act. Maybe she picked up something. Spooky. But to me, regardless, anyway, I had a look at that night. Wednesday night, I had a look at the lyrics and thought, you know what? 
now is the time. I'm just going to do it. Uh, I'd actually ha- had the second COVID jab and I was feeling a bit crook, but I, I'm, I'm going to machine on in here because I just had a feeling and my family are really great. Uh, they, they put up with my glazed eyes at dinner as I was getting these words coming in because I sort of really started it. Went out there and nailed it. What did I nail? I think it's time. Why don't we roll the story of Molly Brown? All right, I'll just tee that up over here. Okay, and rolling. Chris and Margaret Tobin, she's better known as Molly Brown. Born in 1867 in this quiet town, Hannibal, Missouri. Now 13 years old, she's out working her fingers to the bone. Not content, she followed her siblings to the mine to see what they would find. The towns are mining, camping, Molly's sewing in the store. Then and walked a stranger like sun shining in the door And this is who she saw J.G. Brown, the miner, wasn't one to muck around The same year in September had her in a wedding gown The children, they both soon appeared J.G. to the man disappeared Dig deep, it's always the next blow Hey boss, look here, there's something that we found We hit the mother load and now it's shining all around Just like that, they changed their lives After those early days of struggle that survived Then the call they moved, Molly helped found the woman's club Found time to help the children The miners and run for Senate How to change the planet But for Gigi Brown and Molly Things just weren't working out And soon the marriage ended Different rules about what's allowed They went their separate ways in their lives Molly spread her wings and fly Something like it, said, write the story down With her wealth and her freedom, she sailed the world around Then one day in France, everything stood still The news came through your grandson's ill And then she said, I'll take the next available ship back Bright sunshine and a brass band met the passengers that day But everybody's spirits as the big ship sailed away Unsinkable, they said Unthinkable, what's next? Cool moonlight shine and glistened on the ocean all around Soon everyone was sleeping as the ship went steaming on to meet his destiny in the ICC For reasons now unknown the ship sped on through the night Not slowing down with caution despite the faded light The lookout's eyes went wide And then he raised his voice and cried What's this? Hey boys, there's trouble tail ahead An island, sound alarm, sent out the SOS They hit it front and center an iceberg lying in the night Just like that, lost so many lives Though some made it to the lifeboats and survived And one of those was someone that would know Molly Brown She said, this boat's half empty, we gotta turn around. 
She looked the sailor in the eye And then She said How are we ever gonna sleep at night If we So there you go. Probably the ballad of Molly Brown, is it? I'm not sure. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I did. Just listening back, it's really nice feeling. It's, it's a really nice feeling to uh, listen back to a song like that. Um, quite often they're older songs that I'm doing on the podcast, and I'm, I'm really enjoying you know, digging up the old cassettes. Have I got one sitting around here? No, probably not. Oh, yes. Hang on. Uh, <clears throat> Doing a show and tell for the video, of course. Being a slightly different vibe tonight, isn't it? Yeah, I hope it's okay. Won't make a habit of this, but I just thought this, I'm pointing to, is a cassette. <laughs> Youngsters, hey? Yeah, what? Yeah. Check them out. They, they have a great sound. I love the sound of a cassette still there. It's going quite comforting and very warm kind of sound. Speaking of warm kind of sound, well, it wasn't very warm sort of water in that... Uh, song but look i i hope um i, I hope a few things I, I hope that it did uh i don't know justice i guess would comes to mind um it's a pretty it's a pretty big call isn't it sort of doing this sort of thing about someone who actually lived and and but looks looks for things lived well good on you molly um i really feel like something called out to me to write this song so that's why i did it uh, in terms of the nuts and bolts, there I, I just honestly I just just googled Molly Brown and and the first article that came up I kind of went with it was I think I'll check I'll put it in the show notes give them credit it was autobiographies.com I think and it was just really uh, sort of a brief summary of the life and where we're going to go now people we know where we're going to go now we're going to the lyrics because that's what we're, we're going to dive into the lyrics and sort of see see what we can see. Let's see what we can see about Molly Brown. Now, um, here we go. Uh, christened Margaret Tobin, better known as Molly Brown. Uh, interesting, you know, her, her, she got the name, Monica, I guess it is, uh, Molly Brown, uh, Molly, uh, posthumously. Um, she was Margaret and uh, Margaret Tobin. Okay. Born in 1867. And, boy, I mean, that sounds like a long time ago, but when you're sort of writing a story like this, which I was doing... All of a sudden, I'll tell you what, it didn't feel so long ago at all. Okay, uh, now 13 years old, she's out working her fingers to the bone. Um, now, in terms of the, the lyrics here, quite often I'll go into the deeper meaning behind the words. But most of this it's, is, is pretty straight up, isn't it? You know, uh, what, what you see is kind of what you get, working her fingers to the bone. Where did I get that from? Well, it said she'd gone and worked into a factory. And at 13 years old, I thought... Mate, that is pretty young to go and work in a factory. Wow. Okay. And she, there was a spirit about Molly that I was gaining, sort of gleaning here, I guess. I was trying to read between the lines. And part of the job is you kind of not make stuff up, but you go with your feeling. That's what you do as a songwriter. Yeah. So I'm putting your shoes. By the way, I'm putting you in the shoes of being a songwriter here. That's what I'm trying to do. Eh? Uh, not content. She followed her siblings to the mines because that's, you know, the siblings went. What am I doing? I'm going too to see what they could find. Okay, the town's a mining camp uh, that was given to me and Molly got a job working in the store. So I put those, economy is, especially when you're telling a story like this, wow, you've really got to sort of 
get a lot through. So the towns are mining camp, Molly's sewing in the store. I, I like this line. Uh, then in walked a stranger, like sun shining in the door. So not just anyone, when she looked up, was like, wow, I think she saw a future, or at least some of it. And this is what she saw. Who she saw was J.J. Brown, the miner. Where did he come from? Come from? Well, he, he was um, one of the sort of uh, bosses working his way up in the mines, but hadn't had any great success yet when they met. Uh, wasn't one to muck around. Yeah, they, they got married in September. In the wedding gown, uh, the children appeared, a uh, boy and a girl, and J.J. to the mine disappeared. Why I wrote that was because more came out about J.J. It, it, it was said that you, you'll see some... Some difference of opinion, shall we say, on how things run. And uh, yeah, well, this is 1867, so someone's going to be old school. <laughs> JJ was off to the mines. Okay, uh, so I cut to the chase. They went to the mines, they worked long. And so I, I use JJ's voice here. They came here, they work long, dig deep. It's always the next blow. So I thought that I, I imagine them sitting back, encouraging the other guys doing their digging. Yeah. And then, and then one of the diggers said, hey, boss. I didn't actually sing any notes here. I, I went, hey, boss, like an American accent that comes out. I did spend a year there in a wonderful, wonderful place called Cheyenne, Wyoming. Had a, what a great year, so thank you very much. Great times. A little while ago now, eh? <laughs> um, hey, boss, look here. There's something that we've found. We've hit the mother load. It's shining all around. So I got that from a sentence, a very dry sentence that said, uh, Molly and JJ suddenly, yeah, you know, their their finances came right through a major gold strike. So that, that I put, I created a scene, created some voices. So it's really, really, really good fun writing songs. So eh? putting yourself in someone else's shoes like that, looking at the time. I don't want it to go away. I'm just making sure I'm not going to go over time and over time. I try and keep these episodes to about half an hour. I feel that's a bit right, about right, because I want to get some humour in there, like a bit of humour. <laughs> oh yes, I do. Uh, after the early days, oh, yeah, and just like that. They changed their lives. And those early days of struggle, they'd survived. So putting a bit of rhyming in there around this melody and chords and, and keeping the feeling, uh, being honest and being truthful as I could to the story. Okay, one page down. We know we're near the Titanic. Not even close, Jim. Okay, Denver called. Who? Denver. Denver, Colorado. And that was pretty cool for me because when I lived in Cheyenne, Wyoming, that was like just over the border from Denver. So I, I actually went to stay, went to school at Cherry Creek High in Denver, Colorado for a week as an exchange student, which was brilliant. Thank you. Got it. Lovely people. And uh, went skiing at Steamboat in the mountains there. And my first watercolor, actually, I, I haven't got it here with me now. They go, yeah. actually, I might be able to put it up in the video, get clever. My first ever watercolor. Uh, Clint Brown was my art teacher over there. And wow, was he uh, has a like cowboy? Yeah, we we spent the first six weeks of this school of this class art class. He's just going nah, nah. He's chewing tobacco in those cowboy boots. Nah, and we were supposed to be drawing pine trees. Finally, I went. He went whack. Oof, yeah, you got it. All right, Peter. Here you go. Here's a great big piece of paper. Go home and paint me a picture because you can do it. And wasn't that brilliant? Wasn't that empowering from Clint Brown? There you go. Okay, back to Molly. Brown. How about that? That's kind of cool, isn't it? Love that sort of thing. Okay. It's, it's the arts. Hey. Denver called, so they moved. Molly helped found the women's club, found time to help the children, the minors, and, oh, run for Senate, which was way a very unusual for a woman back then. And that's what grabbed me about her story was the power of this woman, uh, hard enough these days as a woman. Let's face it, you know, a lot of stuff that goes on. And look, it's a man's world. We're working hard, balancing of the sexes and all that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, this this story really, really grabbed me. Uh, so <laughs> did you get there? Uh, I mean, the miners and, and she run for Senate out to change the planet. So I've rhymed Senate with planet. Just a bit of tongue in cheek, a bit of humor in there. Hey, why not? Got to lighten these things up, these stories. Because uh, I was mentioning doing it live, and these are all things as a songwriter you're thinking of. Yeah, you're still truthful to the story, still honest, but you're wondering. I, I'm thinking about delivery and that. So, but for JJ Brown and Molly, things just weren't working out. Okay, this is the, this is what happened. I read oh, their marriage ended. They went their separate ways. Um, different rules about what's allowed. Harking back to the, the old school bloke does this, woman does this. Certainly doesn't wear hats and do this and do this and do. 
Molly Brown was an individual and she was a creative spark and she went, yeah. They went their separate ways in their lives and Molly, this bit, Molly spread her wings and flies. So I brought us into the now. I wanted us to feel, I really wanted to feel how Molly felt when she finally sort of spread her wings. Imagine how that must have felt to get away from that, you know, situation that wasn't, was holding her back in some respects, you know. I'm, I'm sure that she absolutely loved a whole lot of, about her life and her kids and that. I'm, I'm, I'm just making this up, you know. I'm just assuming. But we'll see later in the story that she was a pretty solid family person, yeah. But in this case, she spread her wings and flies, and here I put myself in here where it said her will or something like it said, write the story down. So, okay, I will. <laughs> and uh, with her wealth and freedom, she sailed around the world. And then one day, this is the, with the family thing, all at once in France, everything stood still. So that's my words. She'd gone around the world, world in motion, going, going, doing. Yeah, the news came through your grandson's ill. And with that, what did she do? She said, I'll take the next available ship back home. I went, ah. I went, ah, well. You know, you know what ship that was? Yeah. So bright sunshine and a brass band met the passengers that day. They buoyed everybody's spirits and the big boat sailed away. Unsinkable, they said. Unthinkable, what's next? Yeah, got, got what I got there. I think I got away with it. It could have been a little bit like Duffy Duck, you know, <laughs> sort of like, think about it, thinkable. <laughs> that sort of Warner Brothers cartoon, Porky Pig thing. Unsinkable, they said. Unthinkable, what's next? And what's next? The next chapter. So I'm thinking in cinematic sort of things. I, I was seeing a movie as I was reading these sort of dry lines, quickly summing up what I was going to be doing. And what I did was I just scrawled these all down, the words as they came in a rough sort of order. Oh, that sentence. They come out of time. That's what happens as a lyricist. You don't, well, quite often, you, you, you just go along and you write key things and you go back and fill in the gaps. It's so much like painting a picture. You write down. Here's the thing as a songwriter. Write down or play and catch what inspires you most and use that and then go back and fill in the gaps because those big bits of inspiration will lift your whole piece. Rather than sort of slogging away and getting bogged down in one sentence before Molly Brown's even been introduced, yeah, you get the idea, do that. Okay, uh, bright sunshine and a brass band met the passengers that day. And I based that on what I'd seen and what I'd heard and in the Titanic movie, it was sort of portrayed. Yeah, it was a big celebration on man's big achievement and I just thought that was kind of ironic given this is about a woman yeah okay uh when what a wonderful achievement it was it really I, I just it blows me away what what people can do with technology and <laughs> a million miles away from that it was up to me I, I couldn't carve a car a little canoe out of a tree you know I'm, I'm just not that sort of guy I've, I'm yeah creative and, and that's the way it is there's, there's lots of things I do want to try Anyway, um, soon the marriage, where are we? And then he said, oh yeah, the, the, so the brass band, it buoyed everybody's spirits. So buoy, there was a sea sort of thing in there. Everybody's spirits as the big ship sailed away. Um, and I want you to know that the words came really pretty quick. That's the way it goes for me. I really enjoy that. And I think that's good. Keeps me on the breath, yeah? Cool moonlight shone and glistened on the ocean all around. Peaceful, eh? Soon everyone was sleeping. That was what I wanted. As the ship went steaming on, something ominous about that. Yep, sure enough, to meet its destiny in the ICC. And um, I want you to know that as I was writing the song with the music, I just kept, held it up there and added in, in the ICC. After I just wanted that bit of tension building. So that's what I did there. For reasons now unknown, the ship sped on through the night, not slowing down with caution despite the faded lights. I was imagining that moonlight and hidden icebergs and things around, yeah? Not completely dark. To the lookout, eyes went wide. I had raised his head, but yeah, eyes went wide because I had the lookout raised his head and then he raised his voice and said, which wasn't bad, but I thought, is he going to say something? No. The lookout eyes. Wonder what, what, what was happening. His eyes. I want to see his eyes. Oh, they went wide. They'd go wide. And then he raised his voice and cried. What's that? 
hey boys, so there's other people around, the, the, the crew, there's trouble dead ahead, yeah, an island, yeah, oh, what, the panic, sound the alarm, send out the SOS, they hit it front and centre, well I know that the Berg sort of went down the side of the ship I believe, um, but anyway, it, it, yeah, a Berg lying in the night, so lying, you know, that dark thing, just like that, lost so many lives, so I didn't dwell on the you know, the deaths of all those uh, good people, a horrendous event, um, which I alluded to a little bit later on, yeah? So in one sentence, I got that out the way. Though some made it to the lifeboats and survived, so the story's moving on. And one of those, someone we know, Molly Brown. She said this, and then I used her voice here. I thought, because this story goes, where I got this from, she said to the gentleman, uh, Rowing, you've got to turn around and rescue more people. And they went to keen on that because going back towards the boat was dangerous because the, when the boat goes down, pulls things down with it. Anyway, she said, this boat's half empty. We, we've got to turn around. And she looked the sailor in the eye. And then she said, I put this down. How are we ever going to sleep at night if we don't turn round? So I just imagined her saying that calmly and really with some effect. And I think that fellow turned his boat around. Well, he did. And so many hands were lost on that dreadful night. And so, But I like this bit. But some hands were held tight and lifted to the light. And what I had in mind there was more than people in Molly's boat. I, I had some hands held tight um, by perhaps and lifted to light in another another realm. There we go. So a, a general sort of a, a bit moving on of souls, as it were. Um, and then all because of one woman's strength. So I really wanted to bring the message home. Why did I do this? Because of one woman's strength. And then kind of the punchline here. Hey, if only more of us could be like Molly Brown. So there you go. There's Molly Brown's story. Um, I, re I really enjoyed it. Incidentally, you know, I, I played it. I did it live um, in two minds. I might I might actually, on the YouTube video, you know what? I think I'll put the um, live version of it up so you can see it on there this week. Yeah. And because I've got the little studio version that I quickly recorded last night. And uh, during, you might notice actually, if you want to check out the YouTube version, you'll notice that the melody changes here and there because it's very much work in progress. And there's nothing like, here's a songwriter, uh, keep it wide open until you have hit that record button. And even then, change things if you need to or want to because when you're doing things live, um, it just, it just pushes you in different directions. And as a songwriter, it's not a bad idea. Musically speaking... Yeah, I think it will work as just a piano piece. The intro. I didn't get that until the end. I finished the song and then did that. Um, and bear in mind, I, d I did the music, you know, um, as, as totally as an instrumental. Oh, man, 28 minutes and 30 seconds. Can't be serious. What's going on here? Okay, I went to the chorus. I wanted something dramatic. I changed the bass, kept that right hand the same. And again. And here... With it, I kind of had different voices in mind, and maybe building up, you know, where the, the lookout guy says, Hey, boss, you can do the harmony. Yeah, what? There's something, there's something going. So there's a real theme comes in at the end. That, I didn't mind that. And just like that. Do, 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 do. Etc. I'm racing through it a bit because of time constraints a little bit. Yeah, I'm tied to about that half an hour. I like this bit. On there, I could hear a really subtle choral group coming in just in there. Yeah, that, that'd be kind of nice. Um, when I wrote that bit of, well, that's got a bit of power about it. 
And that's why I went. And then you said, I'll take the next available ship back home. Because that was such a key moment that, you know, fate tied her to being on the ship, which, <laughs> you know, she survived. What a woman. Isn't that brilliant? Thank goodness for that. Um, and then I'm just flicking through the song. I think musically, that, that that's kind of it. Um, I will, I am going to do release a piano solo version of this for sure as well, and the sheet music at some stage, I'm sure. I mean, this seems early days to be talking about that sort of thing, but it just sort of fits the bill. That's what I've got in mind, yeah? Oh, and this last bit, uh, musically. Uh, so many hands were lost on that dreadful night. Two things there. Use that diminished chord. You know, the, the other week I spoke about really strong spice just once in the song. And then kept it there. Some hands were held tight. And this one lifted to the light. So made the melody come up. Why? All because of one woman's strength. In this bit. If only more of us could be like Molly Brown. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed molly brown's story uh as much as i did it really it moved me um and yeah look i really appreciate you dropping by uh look there's another 70 odd episodes 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 uh waiting for you if you've just arrived want to delve back in there yeah a lot of songs i've written about 800 um if you want to find out more about me as an artist and musician check out the show notes i'll put some links in there uh, i do a blog every day as a matter of fact you know what? i'm a madman tonight what i did was i did an hour and a half online live concert for my lounge if that sounds like you this is something i'm committed to it was my second one you can check it out on my facebook pete pasco songwriter or my instagram Pete Pasco Art and Music, and you can see the concert there. And if you want to be part of it next time, well, that'd be great because people were messaging me and it brought everyone together. And that is the power of music. And that's what's attracted me to the arts at a time when we're so at home. Well, we're locked away, aren't we? And we're separate from each other. I really wanted to bring people together. And that is what I had planned for this year. Absolutely. And by coincidence, you know, with COVID going on, I was stuck at home. And, you know, I've been working pretty hard <laughs> and you can check out the painting this week and all that kind of thing look whatever you're doing with your life i hope you're having a, a great week and uh let's still take a leaf out of molly brown's book and uh just be the best that we can be that's what i got thanks molly and thank you all right this is pete pasco signing out thank you so much uh, bye-bye if only more of us could be like molly brown